Okay, let's solve this improper integral question that looks like it might require partial fraction decomposition. We have uh, the lower limit is minus infinity. So right away, it is an improper integral. We're going to let some variable, let's call it A, um, head towards minus infinity and take the place of that minus infinity as the lower limit. Then we have negative 8. The function inside is 14 over x squared minus 49, with the denominator factoring to be x plus 7, x minus 7. These two places will be where the function um, doesn't exist. They're asymptotes. Uh, asymptotes. x equals negative 7 and x equals positive 7 are asymptotes. So with us integrating um, from negative 8, off to minus infinity, we should be able to avoid those places where the function is undefined at. We can find the area there, though, from minus infinity up to minus 8. So um, it's going to require us to fr partial fraction decompose. So a is going to go to negative infinity. We're still going to integrate from a to negative 8, but we're going to, let me use a capital A and have that over x plus 7, and a capital B, have that over x minus 7. Quickly figure out what a and b are, and then we can get through the integration. Um, a would be multiplied by x minus 7. B would be multiplied by x plus 7 in order to attain the original numerator of 14. This is true for all x values, um, and we can let x equal 7. And that would help us be able to solve directly for b because uh, we'd have 0 times a, um, 14 times b, and it would be equal to 14. So uh, b is exactly 1. And then we're going to let x equal negative 7. And we'll have negative 14a plus 0 times b is equal to 14. So a is equal to negative 1. So I'm going to go in and rewrite them, but I'm going to have uh, the b be first. So um, we'll have a 1 over x minus 7 minus 1 over x plus 7. That way, um, instead of having negative 1 plus a 1, better have it as 1 minus 1. It's easier. To deal with and now we have the limit as a goes to minus infinity and the antiderivative is going to be the natural log of x minus 7 minus the natural log of x plus 7 and uh, we're going to plug in the a we're going to plug in the negative 8 what we'll do is combine these two into one single log the natural log of x minus 7 on top of x plus 7 using the property of logs and now we'll go plug in. We're taking the limit as a goes to minus infinity. First, what gets plugged in is the negative 8. And so you'll have um, the, the natural log of negative 8 minus 7 on top of negative 8 plus 7. Then you'll have the natural log of a minus 7 on top of a plus 7. Well, what that gives you is the I'm going to save the limit for later I'm going to put it on the other one but we have a negative 15 in numerator negative 1 in denominator and then I'm going to put the limit on this other part here where the a is actually at and what we do about this limit is we are able to interchange these if the limit does exist and so we can uh, then have uh, this here is just natural log of 15 you can drop the absolute value bars and then have the natural log come outside and bring the limit on the inside. And what's going to happen there is that's going to be a, a limit of 1. The degree of the numerator equals the degree of the denominator. And so the, the limit as you go to plus or minus infinity is the ratio of their coefficients and they both have one as their coefficients. And so that part goes to one. 
as a goes to minus infinity. And then we take the natural log of 1. And so we have the natural log of 15 minus the natural log of 1, but the natural log of 1 is 0. And so we get the answer of the natural log of 15. Okay. All right, great.